This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector iPhone 6 using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing to do in Inkscape is set the view to custom, and then we're going to zoom in at 100%. Then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button here. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from that drop-down and then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke. So the first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle. So let's come over to the squares and rectangles tool, click on that, and we'll just click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle. Doesn't matter which shape or size. And then we'll go back to the select tool and we're gonna change the width and the height of this to, I have it written down here in a notepad file, 200 by 415. So we'll take this and we'll come up here to the width, we'll erase that, highlight that, and just type in um, 200, and then hit tab on the keyboard to skip over to the height. And I think that was 415, and then hit enter. 200 by 415, yeah, that was right. So we have our, our rectangle right here, 200 by 415. And with this selected, let's go back to the rectangles tool. And once we're in the rectangles tool, we're gonna to see these little nodes show up here on the rectangle. We're gonna take this little circle node in the top right corner and just click and drag this down a little bit to round the corners, maybe about that much. And then we'll take the opacity of this and drop this down about in half. And we're gonna create another rectangle. So just click and drag to draw another rectangle. We're gonna make the, the corners of that square and we'll make this red and let's go back to the uh, select tool and we're going to make the width and the height of this 180, let's hit 180, hit tab to skip over to the height by 300, I believe it was. 300, hit enter. 180 by 300, uh, 320 actually, 100 by 320 and hit enter. And then hold shift on the keyboard and click on the, on the, on the uh, black rectangle so you have them both selected. And we're going to center those on the vertical and horizontal axis and then click off of it to deselect everything. Now let's zoom in on this graphic right now. You could press plus on the keyboard to zoom in or you could just hold control on the keyboard and roll upwards in the mouse wheel. We're going to want to zoom in. I'm pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse to, to move the page around like this. So we're going to come up here towards the top of this rec red rectangle and we're going to click on that rectangle and go to Path, uh, Linked Offset and we're gonna turn that offset blue and we'll take this node up here in the top left corner and just drag this out a little bit just so that that blue shape is a little bit bigger, just a little bit bigger than that red rectangle. And we'll finalize it by converting it to a path and we'll go to path, object to path. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this black rectangle right here. Let's click on that and let's go to path, linked offset and we're going to turn the offset copy red. And we'll take this node and just click and drag this out a little bit. Maybe about that much. That should be good. And then we'll go to path, object to path to finalize that. Now let's, um, let's scroll down here. You could roll down on the mouse wheel and scroll down. Or you could just press down on the mouse wheel and move the page around like that. Or if you don't have a mouse wheel, there should be uh, scroll bars on the edge of the pages. And we're going to come down here to this bottom portion. We're going to put a circle right there. So let's go to the circles and ellipses tool and click on that. And hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. Then we'll go back to our select tool. And we're going to make the width and the height of this 33. So let's erase that. Hit 33, hit tab, hit 33, and then enter. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on that black shape and center it on the vertical axis, and then click off of it to deselect everything. So we're gonna take this circle right now. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna hold control and just click and drag this down just so it looks like it's in the center. We want it to be in the center of that portion right there. I'd say that's a pretty good position. And let's turn that red, I mean blue, and then we'll right click this, go to duplicate, and we'll turn the duplicated copy red. And we're gonna make the width and the height of this 30, uh, just 30, so let's erase that. 3-0, tab, 3-0, enter. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the blue circle so we have them both selected. And we'll center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So what we'll do next is we'll, let's uh, scroll back up here to the top. 
you can just roll up on the mouse wheel. It'll bring you up here. And I'm gonna create another rectangle. I'm gonna click on the uh, rectangles and squares tool. I'm just gonna click and drag to create a rectangle right here. Uh, let me make the, the corners of that squared for now. And the width and the height of that is going to be 30 by five. So we're gonna make, let's go back to the select tool. Let's erase whatever number that is. Hit three zero, tab, and the height is going to be five, and hit enter. And we're working with pixels here the entire time, just so you know from this dropdown, make sure you have PX selected. And once we've set the width and the height, we'll go back to the, uh, the rectangle tool, and we'll grab this node and just bring that down as far as it'll go to round the edges. I'll go back to the select tool, hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black shape, and let's center that on the vertical axis, and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And the next step is to let's create a circle right up here. I'm just gonna hold control and shift and click and drag to create a circle like that. And the size of that circle will be five. So let's go back to the select tool. We'll make the width five pixels, hit tab, make that the height five pixels, hit enter, and then hold shift and click on this little red shape and center that on the vertical axis. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So the next thing we're going to do is let's click on this circle and right click that and go to duplicate and we'll put this over here off to the left and we're going to make the width and the height of this 8 pixels. So let's erase that and hit eight, hit 8 and then tab and then 8 and enter. And then we're going to hold shift and click on that red rectangle right there and make sure that that is centered on the horizontal axis. And then we can... Um, you know what, let's hold shift and click on this circle so we have all three of these shapes selected. And we're just gonna turn them blue for now just so we could differentiate it. And then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's come over here off to the left hand side of the, uh, of the phone we're drawing. Now let's go to our rectangle tool and let's just click and drag to create a rectangle like that. And I'm gonna make the corners squared for now. Uh, we'll, go back to, we'll go back to our select tool and the width and the height of this is going to be three by 15, so we're gonna erase that, hit three, hit tab, 15, and enter. And we're just gonna take this and put this over here off to the left. I'm gonna zoom in on this a little more by holding control and rolling up on the mouse wheel, just so I can see this better. We wanna position this thing going through this red, red area right here, about halfway through like that. And once you have a position there, we could hold shift and click on this red shape here and align the top edges so that it's placed up there vertically. So let's uh, click off of that to deselect everything. And let's go to our rectangles and squares tool and click on just this right here. And we're gonna grab this node and just round those corners off a little bit. I'll go back to our select tool. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, maybe one, maybe twice like that. And then I'm gonna take this object, I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate. And hold control and click and drag this down to about here. And I'm gonna make the height of this one 30. So erase whatever that is in there, hit three zero and hit enter. And I'm gonna hold control and move this down a little further, maybe about this far apart. And then I'll right click this and go to duplicate, hold control, move that down to about here. And I'd say that looks pretty good. And we could press, uh, you know what? Let's right click that and go to duplicate. And let's bring this over to the right side. I'm just gonna press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse to pan this page over like that. And I'm gonna put this all the way over here, maybe about down here. The other one on the other side, we aligned it to the top edge of the red. So we want this one to be a little lower because it's, that's how it's positioned on the phone. So this will be put down about there. And once you have that position there, go ahead and send that to the bottom with this button right here, lower selection to the bottom and uh, come back over to this side. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna click and drag over those three objects right there. We'll unify them together by going to path, union, and then send them to the bottom as well. Lower selection to the bottom. And then let's press one on the keyboard to zoom out. So here we have pretty much the outline drawn. We just have to color this in and add a few details now. So let's click and drag over the entire graphic and bring the opacity all the way up. And then let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's click on this red, this red square right here, and then hold Alt and click on it again 
so we can get to the blue square behind it. And you'll know you'll have the blue square selected once you see that blue stripe. And we're gonna make this 90% uh, gray. We're gonna leave this back here as black. We want this, this shape right here, we want that to be 100% black. And we want the, the shape behind the red color to be 90% gray like that. And then we'll click on the red shape. We're gonna make this 30% uh, gray. And then we'll give this a linear gradient with this button right here, linear gradient. And we'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and these little nodes will show up. We'll just click on this node to the right and then take the opacity and bring that all the way up. And under the HSL tab, we're gonna take the L column and bring that all the way to the right. And we'll take the white stop and put this up here. And we'll take the, the darker gray stop and just hold control and drag that straight down to there. And then we can go back to our select tool. Next, we can click on this red circle right here and turn that black. And now we're gonna to wanna to select the blue circle that's underneath that. So we can just hold Alt and click on it again to grab the blue one. And we're gonna make this 80% gray. If you just hover the cursor over the shade right here, it'll tell you 80% gray. And then we'll take this uh, black circle and then we'll uh, right click that and go to duplicate and turn that white and bring the opacity down a whole bunch. Maybe, um, we'll just leave it around 50 for now. We'll right click that and go to duplicate. We'll turn that red, hold control and just click and drag this up about halfway through like that. And then we could hold control and grab this top arrow and just scale this out a little bit. Maybe about that much. And then hold shift and click on that white circle we just drew and go to path difference. And then we can go and adjust the, uh, the opacity of this. I think this looks good at about um, maybe 15 or 16 like that. I'm gonna press one to zoom out to see. Yeah, that should be pretty good. 15 or 16% opacity. And then um, let's click on this red object in the background here. I'm gonna hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel. Um, you know what? Let's click on the blue objects first. Let's click on those blue objects right there. Oh, having trouble grabbing them. Once you have them selected, turn them black. Uh, I'm gonna press one to zoom back out and I'm gonna zoom into this side so I can grab this little button and make that black as well. And then we can click on the red objects right there. It's probably good I a good idea to select it while you're zoomed in like this. So go ahead and once you have that selected, press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And we're gonna make this 70% gray. So let's click on this 70%. And then we're gonna give this a linear gradient as well. And we're gonna edit this a little bit. So I'm just gonna click edit. If you're using version 91, there should be a little edit icon down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click edit because I'm using version 48. And on version 91, this dropdown should appear up in the toolbar up here. With version 48, the one I'm using, it, it, it appears in a floating window. So once that's open, there should be two stops here. I'm gonna to go to the bottom one. And under the HSL tab, I'll go to the A column and bring that all the way to the right. And then I'll click this button that says add stop. I'll click that once. And then if you look at the drop down, you'll see there's three stops in there. I'm gonna to go to this, this middle stop right here. And I'm gonna take the L column and bring that all the way, well not all the way, to the right a little bit. Make that a lighter gray. Maybe about 176. And we can close out of that, that's done. And we'll go back to our gradient tool. You can press G on the keyboard, there's the gradient tool. And I'm gonna take this top node and put this up here and take this node, just hold control and just move that down to the bottom. And then uh, we go back to our select tool and click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So the next step for us to do is to give this a little bit of um, like, a, like a reflection, almost like it's reflecting light. And to do that, we're gonna to go to the Bezier pen and we're gonna start out here to outside of the phone to about the right hand side Go ahead and click. And then the line, bring that line straight up through here. So it's going between the circle and the rectangle like that. And then once it's up there, go ahead and click. And then we can just bring this around the outside back to the starting point. We'll go to our select tool. Um, we're gonna take this black object right here and right click that and go to duplicate. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on that shape we just drew and go to path, 
intersection. And we're going to turn that white. And we're going to get rid of the stroke by holding shift and clicking on the X. And that should get rid of that black outline. And then we're going to lower this a few steps. So let's come up here to where it says lower selection one step. I'm going to click that once, two, three, four, five. So that's five times I click that to send that beneath the screen and like the little bevel of the screen there. And once we've done that, we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And um, we're going to give this a linear gradient with this button right here, linear gradient. And then we'll go to the gradient tool by pressing G on the keyboard. And we'll take the white side of the uh, gradient and put it up here outside of the top. And we'll take this one and hold control and just bring it straight down, maybe to about there. So we have it set up like that. And then we go back to our select tool and click off of the graph to uh, deselect everything. And the final step would be to detail these little speakers and camera elements right here. So I'm going to hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm going to click on that rectangle and then hold shift and click on that blue circle and turn those black. And then click off of the graphic, deselect everything. And then I'm going to click on this, just this black rectangle right here. And I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to turn that copy maybe I'll go with 60% gray and then I'll right click that and go to duplicate and I'll turn that copy black and then hold control and click and drag this up to about here and then hold shift and click on the gray piece beneath it and go to path difference and we're going to do the same thing with this this object right here we'll right click that duplicate and I believe that was 60% gray and then we'll right click that, go to duplicate, turn that black, hold control, click and drag upwards to move that up about to there, maybe there. Hold shift, click on the gray circle beneath it, go to path, difference. And then finally we'll come over here and I'm going to make this one I think 80% gray. Yeah, 80% gray. Then I'll right click this and go to duplicate and I'll make that one maybe 30% gray. And then I'll right click that and go to duplicate. We'll turn that black, hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag upwards to about there. Hold shift, click on the gray circle beneath it and go to path, difference. And I can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And that should pretty much do it uh, for this tutorial. That's how you can create a vector iPhone 6 using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.